Before we get into the full system setup, uh, I did discuss saving a custom user preset. When you're more familiar with the machine and you've made some imaging adjustments, say to the dynamic range, uh, you find yourself doing the same thing over and over to optimize the image, change the depth, maybe you want a different annotations library or something of that sort, which we'll learn in a little bit, you can save a preset so it goes to that every time you start the machine. From this image, let's say I made those changes to dynamic range, I like eye image at a certain item, I'm gonna hit menu, Say I want two focal positions, change my persistence, and say I made some of those changes like that, I'm going to exit, and I want to change my depth. I can now go ahead and save it so every time I choose a certain preset, all of those parameters are going to be set for me every time I start the machine. To do that, we're going to hit the menu key and go down to utility. Down here, this menu has changed. It says preset is vascular. I can either rename the preset with this, load a previous preset so I can change overall, but what I want to do here is save as. So I'm going to hit save as, and it's going to say, what do you want me to call this? It says copy of vascular. Instead, I can just write test. And click OK. And now, I have my own preset named test. How do we know that? I'm going to go back, exit this, go back to the probe screen, and here it goes. So each time I boot it up, if I want those special presets, I hit test, and it has my custom presets with the depth set, all those different changes that I made to the system. So now you won't have to make those changes every time, and the image will be exactly as how you like it each time you turn on the machine. And you can save multiple presets depending on the exam, the, the body type, etc. So it just depends on how much you want to play with the machine and how much you want to customize it. So let's now get into the full system setup here. I'm going to press the system setup right here. And here is the most basic stuff where you can enter your hospital name, change your date and time, your time zone, if you want a screen saver, uh, screen type, how much information you want on the screen. That cine loop where I said there were up to 256 frames, you can set it to a shorter time frame, or you can set it to a number of seconds, like 10 or 5 seconds. This curve, this STC curve, is this TGC curve. Every time we moved something, you saw this yellow line appear on the side of the screen. That is showing the position of these TGCs. Options for transmitted images. This is if your images are transferring to dark or something of that sort, you can change these parameters here. I really don't recommend <laughs> messing with them, though. And when you print to a PC format, do you want to send it uh, just the image or do you want the info information all over the screen? Measurements, this gets into how you want uh, the measurements to display in distances, millimeters, centimeters, and different units like that. Clear results upon unfreeze. Each time I unfreeze the image, if there are results on screen, it would clear that. If I want those results to stay on screen, I would uncheck this box. And then freeze upon measure. If I hit the measure, will it automatically freeze? Your font color. Uh, how many distances do you want to measure the follicles? Configuration. This gets into fairly deep stuff on setting up your own configuration for measurements. This is beyond what I would do in this training, but you can set up your own library uh, as to what shows up and where when you pop up that menu. You can actually remove or add calculations from this menu, um, and then once you do that, you can set your OB table as to how you want to add lock handsman or any of that, how you want to customize that for each single measurement item. Comment. Now we can adjust the comment libraries. Uh, when we hit annotations, it had that library pop up on the left hand side. You can customize this to get rid of uh, whatever items you want. So like if when you go into the abdomen, let's say we went into uh, the GYN and we didn't want all of these comments showing up. You could take them here and remove them by clicking this left arrow and it'll go back to the library. Or you can add them, say you want bladder on that menu, you can go ahead, click this arrow and it will add to that. You can also change by clicking these, you can change the abbreviation, what it looks like on there for editing the comment. And here you can put in a new type of comment so you can create your own library. So this comment library over here first tells you all the available items that are preset into the system for that particular mode. And then the comment type 
showing what type of comments you want to pop up uh, when, you, when you use that exam type. Body mark works very much the same way. Exam mode. Now this shows this probe, the L7MA is plugged in, and here are all the different uh, imaging packages that can come up when it selects the probe. They've preset it to these five, and of course I added my own here. And if I don't want that one anymore, which I don't want, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it out of there. So it's gone, but if say I wanna add uh, a GYN, which I wouldn't, but for that, for this purpose, I could just click it over there. And now, when I go to GYN, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. If I hit Probe, now GYN is going to show up when I select that probe. But I don't really want that. I'm going to go ahead and exit back to the setup. And let's say I just want that off of there. And then, exam mode configuration. And we had that one that I created that I don't want at all. I had this test one that is uh, not useful. I'm going to go ahead and delete, and I'm going to delete that exam mode. So no longer will it be in this exam mode selection. And over here for this configuration for the exam modes, say in pediatrics you want a different library show up. For comments, you can double click on it and select, say you want the small parts library in pediatrics or something of that sort, depending on what it is that you're looking at. So again, all this is very, very customizable. And if you do this on multiple machines, you can import and export these configurations from one machine to the other. Keyboard configuration, these numbers 1 through 0 can be configured to anything that any function that's selected over here. So if I want to press the 1 key to store an image, I can select that, and each time I hit 1, it's going to store an image, or I just select none. So I've got all these different things. I can have that saved to the UDesk, etc. What would be more helpful, actually, is if you don't have a printer attached, it would be better to assign print 1 or print 2 if you want to go straight to a USB. You can say score, store image to U disk. So if you've got the USB, you can hit print 1, it'll jump it right to a, the, the disk. Same thing with Cine. Also shows you, you can go to a full screen by hitting one of these keys if you want to press 1. So again, you have all these options here on assigning to keys 1 through 0, or any of these print 1, print 2, the cine loop, and the save can all be customized to whatever it is that you would like, you know, if you just want the error or the archive to show up. DICOM setup. Before you do this, you're first going to want to set up your network. And this is stuff that um, you have to get through your IT professional and also the person running the DICOM server. They will tell you whether uh, you're on DHCP or if you want a static IP address, and they'll give you these parameters here. They can give you an IP address, which is what's called pinging, where they say, uh, I want to make sure that your machine is on the network. They'll give you something to plug in here, and you'll click test, and it'll tell you if it's successful or not. Storage is for uh, network storage on a, a shared directory, so you can save images on the network, which is not the same as DICOM. It is for network storage only. And then once this is set up, these are the settings you want if you want to store on DICOM. Don't worry about the storage part. You want to do this to make sure you're on a network. And now you set up your DICOM server. In order to do that, you have to add a service by clicking Add. And it's going to give you a drop down here. Do you want DICOM work lifts, print, store, or SR for structured reporting? And do you want this to be the default service that it goes to? This is only information you can receive from the person who runs the DICOM server. They will give you the AE title, the IP address, and the port, and all these are extremely important. Um, and 99% of the problems uh, people have with connecting to DICOM uh, include, A, they're not on the network, um, and there's a firewall in between, but the next are the AE title, the IP address, and the port. If those aren't exactly as they were described and how you want to do them, you will not be able to send images. It just simply won't go across. Here's your settings for DICOM print, density and print job, depending on what it is that you're wanting to do, how you'd be able to adjust those. So originally we have the net. If I do DICOM storage, note that I can't do any of these print jobs or anything of that sort. So you'd want to set up each one of those services in that DICOM setting. We just saw the DICOM, and the final one is system. You wouldn't see this page unless there has been some sort of update that you have been given or you wanted. Uh, it doesn't happen very often that you would want to do that, um, but they would give you a disk or something to download, and this is the page they would take you to. In addition, if you had any problems with your system, you would go to this page, and 
give them the information about your software and hardware version. But otherwise, you wouldn't really need to see this screen at all. So I'll just hit cancel to get out of that. And that concludes the training on the Chison Eco 5 ultrasound machine. Thank you for watching.